Okay, great folks, welcome to week 13. In this session, we're just going to revise your different formulas that you can use for two-dimensional trig and then do a couple of trig problems. So let's just do that. So first of all, just a recap on your sine rule. Your sine rule states that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Or remember, it's reversible. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And remember, when you're talking about A and little a and big A, then big A is your angle, and your little a is the side that's opposite to it. So in this case, what we're talking about is this side over the sine of that angle equals this side over the sine of that angle equals this side over the sine of that angle. Right, so that is the sine rule. Next up is the cos rule, which is equal to a squared equals b squared plus b squared minus 2bc cos a. Now, this version of the cos rule is on the formula sheet together with the sine rule. And again, when we're talking about a, b's, and c's, we're talking about the little side here. If that is designated little a, then that's big angle a. Little b, big b, little c, big c. But sometimes it's useful to rearrange in this form where we solve for the angle. And then cos a is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2ba. Now remember, when do we use the cos rule? Basically, when we've got two sides in an enclosed angle. So remember I said to you it looks kind of like a C, where we've got two sides in an enclosed angle, we want the length of the third side, we can use the cos rule. Next up is the area rule, and obviously we use the area rule when we need the area. And normally, if you have a right angle triangle, your area is just equal to a half base times by height. Now we did teach you in grade 11 how to derive this area rule and you do need to know it. So please go back to the grade 11 videos if you don't remember how to do it and go practice. Otherwise, you just remember that this is on the formula sheet, area is equal to half AB sine C. And again, what are we doing using two sides in an enclosed angle? So let's look at an example just to get us to grips with it. It says TP is a tower. TP is a tower. It's at its foot. So that's T, and this is T, is a tower. At its foot, the points P and Q are on the same horizontal plane. P and Q are on the same horizontal plane. And it says, from Q, the angle of elevation to the top of the building is X. So angle of elevation from the top of this is X. Furthermore, angle PQR is both 150 degrees. So that's 150 degrees. Angle QPR equals Y. And the distance between P and R is A. And it says, prove that TP, TP, what this do here, this side here, there we go, is equal to A tan X times by cos Y root 3 sine Y. Hmm. Okay, so do you agree that since we've got, we want to get into TP, we want to get to that side there, we want to get into this big right angle triangle here, but we also have values of A tan X and cos Y's and plenty of other numbers. So do you agree that this here, this line here, is our break? Let me give them a different color. So that line there, PQ, is our break. So we need to get PQ in terms of this triangle here. We've got an A, we've got a 150, and we've got a Y. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, I have this angle here is 150, and I've got that sign A. And I've got Y. I want this length here. This angle here could be given as 180 minus 150 plus Y, which could be rewritten as 30 minus Y. So that could be 30 minus Y. And do you agree then I could use the sine rule to get PQ? I could say that PQ over the sine of the angle opposite PQ, which is this one here, which is going to be 30 minus Y, is equal to sine is equal to A, A, over sine 150. 
turn over to breathe. Today for PQ is equal to A times by sine 30 minus Y all over sine of 150. Now if we look at this and we look at that, that doesn't look at all the same. The only thing that I'm seeing here is this A. Here it is. That's about it. But now, let's see what I can do with sine 30 minus y and sine 150. We know that sine of a minus b is equal to sine a powers b minus powers a sine b. So let's do that. Let's rearrange that now. So here we go. a, sine of 30 minus y becomes sine of 30 cos y minus cos of 30 sine y. And do you agree sine of 150 is strictly got an acute angle? If I use my path diagram, 150 is over here. So that is the same as saying sine of 180 minus 30, and we know it's all station P Cape Town, so therefore that's the same as saying sine 30. So awesome, we can rewrite sine of 150 as sine 30. And now I'm thinking, I'm thinking of my special triangles, because all I'm seeing is 30 degrees, and I'm seeing over here, I've got a root 3. So there's got to be something there with the special triangle. So that's 60. That's 30, that's a 90, this is 2, this is 1, and root 3. So let's see what the inner also we're going to be using, obviously, the, 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 So now let's see if we can rearrange this. It becomes A, sine 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half, times cos y, minus cos 30, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2, times sine y, all over sine 30, which is 1 over 2. So I could take this a half and take it to the top, and when I take it to the top, I times it by 2, because this is the same as saying divide by a half. And what do you do when you divide by a fraction? You tip and times. That becomes a times a half cos y minus root 3 over 2 sine y all times by 2, which gives me a, that cancels with that, and this cancels with this. So we get cos y minus root 3 sine y. Okay, and if we look at it now, we've got A, we've got cos Y, we've got root 3 minus sin Y. Awesome, life is looking good. Now we just need to find out where the heck did this tan X come from? Where did this come from? Well, that's pretty easy because now we've got PQ and we want TP. But if we look that this is a right angle triangle, tan of X, tan of X is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so we can say that tan x equals opposite, which is pp, over pq. So therefore we can say, ah, therefore we can say that pq tan x is equal to tp. And what did we want? We wanted tp, and we wanted the tan x, but what is pp? pq is this thing over here. So therefore, we can say that TP is equal to A tan X times by cos Y minus root 3 sin Y. Ta-da! We have proven that TP is equal to A tan X times by cos Y minus root 3 sin Y. Sure, that is my hate for question. Please note baby steps, okay? You've got to highlight what you've got, and you've got to highlight where you're going to so you can work out where your bridge is. Then you work on how you're going to get from this triangle to that triangle, and like I said, you identify your bridge, and then you start working it through. And like I said, baby, baby steps, don't panic. Just because you've got a sign 150 here, 
doesn't mean you're not going to work it out, but you've got to know all your basics, like your special triangles and your compound angle rules in order to be able to do these problems. Let's look at another example. It says, at point N on the tower, N meters from the top, so N little N meters from the top, a bird has made its nest. So there's the nest. Okay. The angle of inclination from B to point A is alpha. So that there is alpha. And the angle of inclination from point B to point N is beta. Okay. First thing says express angle AGN, AGN in terms of alpha and beta. So where is it? A, B, N. So we want this little angle. Let's get out a different color. We want this little angle there. Well, do you agree that angle AGN can actually be written as alpha minus beta? Because the whole of this is alpha and just this little bit is beta. So therefore, AGN right here, angle AGN, is going to be alpha minus beta. So I'm the right thing there, that's alpha minus beta. Right, what's next? Now they say express angle A in terms of alpha and or beta, so we want this angle here. Okay, they ask you to express angle A in terms of alpha and or beta. Okay, so there are a couple of ways we can do this, but the easiest way is probably to realize that this big thing here is a right angled triangle. So therefore for A, we can get 180 minus 90 for that angle, minus, and what is the whole of this? The whole of this is alpha, okay? So therefore this becomes 90 minus alpha. So angle A is angle A equals 90 minus alpha. Okay, let's see what else they want us to do. Now it says, show that the height of the nest from the ground, they want this, this H here, can be determined by N, little n, cos alpha, which is over there, sine beta, which is over there, over sine alpha minus beta, which is over there. Hmm. Okay, so do you agree that we kind of get H, but we've got some stuff in N here as well. So we obviously trying to get from this little triangle here into this little triangle there. So what is our bridge? Obviously our bridge is going to be this line here, NG. Our NG is the bridge. Okay, right, so we want, we want N and we want alpha minus beta and we want this sign and we've got this. So do you agree we could use the sign rule? Again, so we can say that NG over sign of 90 minus alpha is equal to little n over sign of alpha minus beta, because there's that little angle there. Remember we worked that out? Alpha minus beta. So therefore we can say that ng is equal to n sine of 90 minus alpha over sine of alpha minus beta. Now, grade 12, I want you to realize that when you look at this and you see cos alpha, and you wonder how the heck are you going to get that? If you just start with your steps and you go through, you'll get to a point here where you'll go, wait a minute, but sine of 90 minus alpha is a cos function of cos alpha. Therefore, I can say, therefore, I can say ng is equal to n cos alpha all over sine of alpha minus beta. Now, these proof, try to prove things are awesome because now we can tickle what we've got and see where we're going. So let's have a look. We've got cos alpha, check. We've got n, check. We've got sine of alpha minus beta, check. So what are we looking for? We're looking for sine beta. So now I'm going to change colors so we can go on to the next bit. So let's change that. Sine of beta. So where is beta? There is beta. So you say, hmm, I want an H. 
and we're looking for a sine theta. But what is sine? Sine is star per para. Sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So if I think about the sine theta, do you see that that is h over the hypotenuse, which is mg, which is awesome because I got mg. So let's look at that. That becomes sine of theta equals or opposite, which is h over mg. Right, then you see, oh, but look, h is equal to mg sine theta. Okay, but mg is this bit here. So then I can substitute, and I'm going to write it here because I want to have space. So it becomes m cos alpha times by sine theta all over sine of alpha minus theta is equal to a. Ta-da! We have just proven it. So now you can see how you can use what you have to prove to find your way through. Please, grade 12, the more you practice this, the better you're going to get at it. And make sure you know your fundamentals. Have a lovely day.